Hello, hi everyone. Welcome to Cloud Sprint. In this GCP series, the next topic we will cover is around cloud storage. We will uncover what are options cloud storage has and why it is so popular. Due to seamless integration with other GCP services, it is one of the most powerful tool. How? Let's go ahead and find out. The first question is what is cloud storage? Cloud storage is a managed service for storing your unstructured data. You may store any amount of data and retrieve it as often as you like it. Second point is cloud storage allows you to store your data worldwide and retrieve at any amount of data at any time. That's the flexibility cloud storage offers. The use cases with cloud storage are very, very rich. These are just few examples of them. Nutshell, a bucket is created under a GCP project at a location and storage class with support of versioning and lifecycle. These four topics are really important while working on the cloud storage, also while appearing for the exam. In this video, we are gonna understand all these four concepts to the end and find out how they work. Go ahead and understand the first one, which is cloud storage locations. A bucket's location defines the physical place where that object data in the bucket resides. You can select from the multiple following location types. The first location type is regional. A region is a specific geographic place. Then you have option of dual region. It is specific pair of reasons such as Tokyo and Osaka can be one of your dual region option. The third option of it is multi-region. Multi-region is a large geographical area such as US, that contains two or more geographic places. Confused? Let's go ahead and find it out on a console. For that, first of all, we will go ahead to cloud storage. I've already pinned it. I'll click on cloud storage. Once you go to the cloud storage, this is the kind of this is the kind of dashboard you'll get. Okay. Um, first of all, we'll create a bucket and see that how it works. You can either click here or you can click here. Let's create the bucket. You have to first of all pick a globally unique name. Let me give a globally unique name, which is Cloud Sprint. You click on continue. In the presentation, we were talking about this location type. You have three options, regional, dual regional, and multi-regional. When you choose multi-regional, you'll see that you have three options. If your clients are across US, you can use this multi-regional uh, bucket type. If it's in EU zone, you can choose EU. If it's in Asia, you can choose Asia. That's how you can distribute your files across the region. That's the use case of multi-region. It, it gives you a very high availability across the largest area. Of course, it is expensive as well. The second option is dual region. You can choose one region, either Europe, Asia, or America again, but you can choose the options, okay? So suppose your maximum customer are from uh, US West 1 and US West 4. They are not from this area. You'll choose, choose these two and you'll pay for only these two. This flexibility you have to choose and pay a little less money. However, in multi-region, you don't control that. There's also an option of turbo replication, like you upload the data. It, it, it gets replicated between these two uh, locations which you have selected. But if you choose this, it will be much faster, but it, it will be charged. You, you understood what is multi-reason, what is dual reason. The cheapest option is reasonal. Your data is only stored in one reason, whatever you choose. Then again, you have multiple zones to uh, you know, dis, uh, replicate your data. If something, if a reason goes down, then your solution will go down. If a zone goes down, you can still serve the application. This is your choice of the geolocation while configuring your bucket. While creating your bucket, you must know what is your requirement and you're gonna choose on basis of that. While creating the bucket and selecting the location type, you need to keep only two things in mind. First is, your latency, second is your cost. Let's go back to the presentation and understand some use. I hope after looking at the console, it is little clear now. What is reason, what is the dual region, and what is the meaning of multi-reason? 
One very important note I want to highlight is that you cannot change a bucket's location after it's created. But you can, of course, move the data uh, to a bucket uh, in a different location. But you cannot change the location of a bucket once it's created. You need to delete it and then recreate it. That's that's the uh, that's one thing you need to take care. So it's very very important to choose the right location while it while you're creating it. That solves the first thing, which is location. How to choose a location? How do you choose a location? In which case, what is suited the best? With with some examples, we'll try to understand it. Suppose my first requirement is. I want to optimize latency and bandwidth. I want the lowest data storage cost and I'm happy with cross zonal redundancy. So if, if, if a zone goes down, another zone serves my request, I'm happy with it. In this case, I'll go with regional because regional is satisfying me all three requirements. In, in the second example, I want to optimize latency and bandwidth. I want cross region redundancy, which means that if one region goes down, another region should serve my application. In this case, I'll go with dual regional option. Third is that I third option is like I want the highest availability, which means that it should be across the region, and that you want cross geographical data access. In that case, I'll choose multi regional. I hope these examples helped you to understand how to recommend a location on what basis and what is the meaning of these, these three bucket locations. To the second concept of buckets. Storage class, it is one of the most important concept of this entire uh, topic. Basically, a storage class is a piece of metadata that is used by every object. A storage class set for an object affects the object's availability and pricing model. It simply means that you attach a metadata with every with every file you upload and that metadata affects the how that particular object will be available or how much you will you're going to pay for that to break it further let's understand that storage class types we have four type of cloud storage class the first one in the line is standard storage Standard storage is best for data that is frequently accessed, also called hot data. And it is stored only for brief period of time. The second option is near line storage, which is low cost, highly durable storage service for storing infrequently accessed data. You need to have the data in the bucket at least for 30 days to qualify for near line. The third option is cold line. Cold line storage is very low cost. It is highly durable storage service again, and it is also stored for infrequently accessed data. Minimum storage duration is 90 days for this cold line class. The last class is archival. Archive storage is the lowest cost. It is highly durable storage service for data archiving, online backups, and DR kind of things. 365 days is the minimum storage duration for this. This minimum storage duration means that you need to use this these options only if you're going to keep the data for this particular period. Then only you'll get benefit of the cost. Suppose if you put a data in nearline storage, you're not going to uh, qualify for that cost if you delete or move the data within 20 days. It will be charged as standard. That's the difference of the concept. Again, let's go ahead to the console and find out what are these four options? So far, we had chosen the location. So for this example, let's choose US East one. Let's go down and let's choose continue. In the next step, it is asking me to choose a storage class. Last Google Cloud Next, uh, this auto class was launched. It automatically you know, transitions each object to hotter or colder service based on object level activity, okay, to optimize the cost. But uh, first of all, we need to understand and then we will choose if we it is clear why to rely on an auto class. As we discussed, we have four options. Standard, near line, cold line, archival. Standard, standard. When you when you choose standard, you're choosing a class of data which is just you frequently accessed. You choose near line, you know that it will be you know accessed once in a month. When you're choosing cold line, you're sure that 
once in 90 days, this data will be accessed. Once you choose archive, you, you are sure that only in next one year, this data will be accessed. Okay, that's the criteria while choosing which class this your data belongs to. Suppose you are storing the profile of your users in standard. Profile JSON will be accessed almost every day whenever user logs in. So you will keep it here. You are doing something, um, you are storing a data which is only used once a month for monthly reporting. You will choose near line. When you know a data is will be accessed only once a quarter, which could be suppose some audit report, you, you have to run once a quarter, you'll choose cold line. And when you know that uh, you need uh, just need to keep the uh, legal data for some legal issue if it happens for 10 years and it, it is only accessible once a year, you'll choose archival. Okay, that's how you are going to choose the uh, class of the bucket. Okay, I hope this is clear. Let's go ahead again to the presentation and understand with some examples. The first storage class is again standard, as you mentioned. There's no minimum storage duration needed. You don't, you're not charged for retrieval fees. Your typical monthly ability is greater than 99.99% in multi-regional and dual regional, 99 in regionals. The second option is nearline storage, which is Again, minimum storage duration required is 30 days to get this benefit. If once you retrieve the data from a nearline storage, you have to pay for the retrieval fee. You see the ability have decreased in multi-regional and dual regional. That's why it is a little cheaper option. The option is cold line. Cold line, your minimum storage duration required is 90 days. So when, when your use case is needed, that you only need to you only need some need to access something once in 90 days then you use this particular cold line storage. Again, you have to pay some retrieval fee. You can check the availability here. The last option is archive storage, which is archive class. 365 days is the minimum storage duration. You need to pay for the retrieval fees, right? These four storage classes are here. We already understood at the UI and what it is and how to use it. All right, so we covered what is storage buckets. We understood what are the what are the storage location and what are the storage classes. Let's go ahead and do a case study to understand it better. You need to answer the question. So Bob needs to store a data for over 10 years for legal audits. This data can be accessed by the legal team from multiple reasons anytime if needed. The question is, which location and class should Bob use? Take a second and answer that question. Clearly, since Bob needs to store it for 10 years, Bob will go with archival class and multi-region is needed, so it will go with multi-regional option. Let's go ahead and complete the bucket which we are creating. Right, so we choose standard location, we choose US East one, okay. In the next video, we'll understand these two concepts. We'll say continue. The next option is that how to control access to objects. If you want to create it public, you can check it, uncheck it. You can uncheck it. If you check it, it will not allow your bucket to be publicly accessed. The next option is uniform. Uni when you choose uniform, it allows access on all objects in the bucket okay by using the bucket label permissions so whatever permission you assign on the bucket label all the objects within this will be accessible to that particular uh, user service account or the user group okay then you have fine grain you can specify access of individual users at acl level so suppose you want to store a credit card information and you only want users to take access of that you'll at that time while dealing with sensitive information you'll be using fine-grained uh, permission and while uploading the file only you ensure the permission of that file within that command while uploading it for this example we'll create con uh, uniform and click on continue we'll say none create All right, this created a bucket. You can upload files, you can upload a folder, create a folder, you can transfer data. There's a lot of options. So that's 
you can see creating a bucket is really easy once you know what you need and what are your use cases. In the next video, we will understand about the versions, what are versions, what are bucket lifecycle, and how to upload data, what are transfer services. Let's watch out the next part as well.